Mobile television production facilities for this broadcast are made possible by a grant from Walmart. Walmart, with their location on the White Horse Pike in Somerdale. You're watching Sterling High School Channel 19, winner of the Mid-Atlantic Emmy Award for the best live game broadcast. Serving Hinella, Wild Springs, Magnolia, Somerdale, and Stratford. Hello everybody, welcome back to Sterling Channel 19. We are here for the final regular season game for the Sterling Lady Knights. They're at 19-6 and six as they take on the Bishop Eustis Crusaders at 11-14. and 14. Take a look at the Colonial Liberty standings. Woodbury leading the way at 17-6 and six overall. Right behind them is Sterling at 19-6. and six. Then it's Haddonfield at 18-8, and eight. Haddon Township 14-10. and 10. Haddon Heights at the bottom at 12-14 and 14, as well as West Stepford at the very bottom at 11-16. and 16. Take a look at the Olympic national standings. At the top is Paul VI at 19 and two. Right behind them is Camden Catholic at 18 and 10. And then it's Bishop Eustis at 11 and 14 at the very bottom. It's the Camden Panthers at 11 and 11. 
Nice. Look at the compare the team. Sterling at 19 and 6, second in the Colonial Liberty. Offense averaging 40 points per game, defense allowing 30 points per game. Top scores for the Knights are both Morgan Sims and Bridget Dixon with 10 points per game. Then it's Mackenzie McDonald with 8 points per game and Aaron Quinn with 7. Then it's Bishop Eustis, 11 and 14, third in the Olympic National. Uh, offense averaging 38 points per game, defense allowing 46 points per game. Leading scorers is Giovanna Rogers at 10 points per game, Lauren Larada at 9 points per game, as well as Isabella Sereno at 9 points per game, and Elena Staub at 5 points per game. And we're going to let the girls introduce themselves. Mackenzie McDonald, Jr., forward, Laurel Springs. Morgan Sims, Jr., guard, Stratford. Bridget Dixon, Jr., point guard, Somerdale. Aaron Quinn, Jr., guard, Somerdale. Shane Duffy, Jr., forward, Somerdale. Kayla Knott, Jr., forward, Somerdale. Ireland K, sophomore, guard, Stratford. Antonia Troilo, sophomore, guard, Laurel Springs. Amber Wilsey, sophomore, guard, Stratford. Paris Logan, sophomore, forward, Hainella. Maddie Sims, freshman, forward, Stratford. Lexi Kuhn, freshman, center, Stratford. Good look there at the Lady Knights and look at the game history since 2007. Overall win percentage for Sterling, 72%. Bishop Buse is 56%. Non-league matchup, Sterling at a 61% win percentage. Bishop Buse is at 57%. Home and away for Sterling is 76%, and Bishop Buse is at 55%. This series is tied at four, uh, at four and four. Bishop Buse has won three straight. Sterling's last win against Bishop Buse was in 2016. Look at the keys to the game, the limit turnovers to get good rebounds and get out in transition. Look at the Bishop Eustis starters. The only senior for Bishop Eustis, Lauren Larada at number 24. Then it's Giovanna Rogers, Isabella Serrano, Elena Stab, and then Aslan Higgins. And then here are the Sterling starters. Four of them juniors, Morgan Sims, Aaron Quinn, Bridget Dixon, and Mackenzie McDonald, and the lone sophomore, Harris Logan, in the starting lineup for the Lady Knights. Look at the South Jersey Group 2 uh, first round. It'll be this Tuesday, February 21st. Sterling will take on Collingswood, which will be live on Channel 19, as well as YouTube.com slash Sterling TV 19. And, and it's me, Brian McLernan, joined with joined by Kevin Schulz. And again, this is the last regular season game for these Lady Knights today. Yeah, it is. And Brian, great job leading us in there. And they're going against a useless team that starts to force off towards the one senior. But you look at their division with Paul Six in there. Um, you've got Cam McCaffrey, who we saw the other day. That division is loaded, so don't let the record fool you. Take a look at the Sterling starters being introduced as we are close to be getting underway here at the castle. There you see the uh, stars getting introduced. Aaron Quinn, of course, coming off that injury. It's good to see her out there because didn't look good the other night with her coming off the court. Uh, iced it, and uh, apparently she's good to go right now. Saw her in warm-ups, looked like she wasn't favoring anything, and I think if there was any bit of favor, they probably would sit her out, but apparently everything's good, and uh, just a great tune-up right now going into playoffs, and we always say you like what Coach McDonald does in having all of the tough teams in those out-of-conference games, and I think it makes you ready as we look at Coach Sal Rocabaldo for Bishop Eustace, bringing his girls in, a very young team. And then we look at Coach Kate McDonald, who really has her team playing well. And I know that Cam Catholic game didn't go too well, but Cam and Catholic is an elite team. They you know, have the record that doesn't look great, but again, the caliber competition they play uh, is, has a lot to do with that. But 
I have a couple Division One players, uh, one going to UMass, one going to Quimpiac, and it definitely showed. Their press was outstanding, and I think that's one of those things that can get Sterling ready for the playoffs. So we are about ready to get things underway. And it will be Sterling to start things off on offense. Here is Dixon. Gets that to Quinn and back to Dixon. Glad you're with us here in this final regular season matchup. Again, I'm Brian McClurman, joined by Kevin Schulz. Here's Sims who gets that one back to Dixon. Well, you want to get good ball moving to half-court set. I felt like the other day, especially with that press they got out of having some ball fakes and, and keeping the defense off balance, and Cameron Catholic definitely took advantage of that, uh, cutting into some of those passing lanes and getting the turnovers going the other way. So Logan gets it stripped away. It's now Bishop Eustis ball. As he'll start on offense for the first time today. That gets stolen away by Sims, and now here's Dixon with it. She drives, makes a nice move. The layup there, no good. Logan gets the rebound, and then a foul at the end of the play. Good job by Paris Logan going in there, getting a re rebound. And we've talked at length at what she's meant to this team over the last four or five games. Really playing with a lot of confidence. You see her there in a crowd, and that's going to be important today, how well she does in a low post. And so far, she's off to a good start. First shot by Logan is good. First points of the day. Belonging to Paris Logan from the free throw line. And the second shot is good. So Logan is two for two from the line to start things off. And that's big if she can hit her free throws because with the way she plays, she's definitely going to get opportunities to free throw line. So here is Eustace trying to answer back. And the three there is good for number 23, Elena Stab. Stab right there, one of the sophomores hitting from way out. So here's Dixon. She drives, gets it stripped away, it goes out. Yeah, you see Bridget Dixon down there along the baseline. Usually you see her out front, rarely see her there, but really look comfortable. Sensing that defender was a little bit out of control, went with the baseline drive, only to have the help defense of Bishop Eustace come over. So it was Aaron Quinn to inbound it. Here she is. Finds Sims back to Quinn. Now here's Dixon. Finds McDonald inside. Layup can, is no good. And a rebound by Larada. Yeah, that's a nice, nice positional play defensively by Serrano down in the low post. Bishop Eustace with a 3-2 lead here early. Three there is no good. Logan trying to get the aggressive rebound, and we'll see who that's out on. Bishop Eustis is trying to get real good ball movement, and it looks like their end game is to try to get the ball to the free throw line to have an open opportunity there. But Sterling really is doing a good job getting help defense over there, forcing them to kick it back out. Here's Sims. Long find to Dixon. Dixon drives, mid-range shot there, no good. Rebound by Larada. She takes it up the floor. Gets it to Rogers. Close to about five and a half minutes remaining in this first quarter. Bishop Eustace with a one-point lead, trying to add on. Shot there, no good. Nice rebound by Sims. And so far, we're seeing what we've seen all year. Sterling's really doing a good job rotating in that zone defense. Here's Logan. Looking for someone, gets it to Sims. Back to Logan. Then gets it to McDonald, then back to Sims quickly. Here's Quinn, finds McDonald. And the thing about Sterling, Brian, is they don't mind playing this patient game. They'll, they'll move the ball around, run their half-court set, and just try to frustrate teams defensively, just wear them out, and ultimately try to get them chasing. Sterling being very patient, as you said, Schulz. They're not afraid to do that. Trying to just wear out this Bishop Eustis defense. 
Dixon trying to make the move. She drives, finds McDonald. McDonald's shot no good, gets her own rebound, then finds Dixon. Dixon chucks up a three. That shot is good. Yeah, that was a good play already. Great half court ball movement. You saw what Kevin McDonald said since she was just got the pass a little behind her, was a little bit out of control, knew it. Didn't try to go up for an off-bound shot. Kicked it back out, and Bridget Dixon drains it. Just a great job offensively by Sterling overall. So again, Bishop Eustis trying to answer back. They now trail it by two. Able to stay with it, foul called. Take a look at the last basket by Dixon. Yeah, you could see everybody collapsed down on McKenzie down in the low post, and she saw Bridget out there. Got her for a wide open look. 350 remaining in the first quarter. There's Larada, gets that to Rogers, gets it stripped away, goes out of bounds. Now, if you're used to moving the ball around the outside, if you're anywhere close to that wing, that defense is strong on the perimeter. He's going to trap you, so you got to get rid of the ball quickly. Three ball, no good. Rebound by Sims. And now here's Dixon taking up the floor. Finds Sims back to Dixon. Sterling just trying to move at their own pace. Finds McDonald inside. Layup is good. Nice find by Dixon as McDonald connects with her first points of the game. And Mackenzie McDonald just really looks comfortable down there in the low post, whether she's defended or not. Goes right to the basket, uses her body. And what a look by Bridget Dixon on the outside. Sterling with a 7-3 lead here in this first quarter. Layup is no good. Gets it stripped away. Bishop Eustis stays with it. Trying to drive. Can't get any shots to go. And somehow Bishop Eustis still has it. And that layup is good by Isabella Serrano. Yeah, that was just a nice play by Serrano, finding the open spot, the hole in Sterling's defense. But other than that, the defense has been outstanding. Three shots before that didn't even hit the rim. And a nice move by Dixon, but her shot does not go. So now here's Bishop Eustis to get it back. And that ball gets stripped. She kind of loses it at the end. We'll take a look at the last basket. Yeah, Serrano right there. Really does a nice job. You see her initially going through the, to the two defenders to help defenders and just moved laterally to get around them and did a real nice job finishing. You just really needed that one. So here's Quinn, long find to McDonald. McDonald drives toward the basket. And a foul at the end of that one. Count the bucket and the foul for Mackenzie McDonald. And we have... Looks to be an injured player on the court. We hope she's okay, but that's just an outstanding sense of knowing what was available on the floor when Mackenzie McDonald got that ball. She knew right away, even though she was looking straight to the right, she knew to the left she had a wide open lane there and really accelerated through there. Watch her right here. She's going to get the pass right here. Knew that there was a wide open lane for her and finished. That's... Tough thing to see. That's Elena Stab, who is in immense pain, being treated by Sean Clank. There, take a look at the replay once again. Kind of fell really awkwardly on that ankle. No, oh. and that's a great sign because we've seen. Legs get caught up like that before, and the result wasn't as good as this one is. So good for her. That's good she's up on her feet. Yeah, glad to see she's up under her own power, too, because that's, that's a big difference maker when it comes to some of these injuries you see. Here's McDonald from the line. And the shot is good. So she capitalizes off the foul there. It's now a five-point Sterling lead. Less than two minutes remaining. A 10-5 score here in this first quarter in favor of Sterling. Sterling with some aggressive defense here. 
Layup is good. So that cuts this lead down to three. Well, we talked about Stone having good patient sets. That was a great job by Eustace because most of the way through, them running their half-court offense, Sterling was right there. A fall that, and Sims kind of takes a fall there. She gets the rebound. Layup is no good. Falls into the hands of Aslan Higgins. Aislinn Higgins. My apologies. And then we'll get a timeout. Take a yeah, look at those. It's just a great job there. You saw Sterling come over with the help defense in the early part of that um, sequence of plays right there, and they stopped everything. And give credit to Eustace. They stuck with it, stuck with it, and got that backdoor layup. You can order a DVD copy of your favorite Sterling Channel 19 event. It's $20 per event plus $3 for mailing. So if you want to order your own DVD, please include the name of the event and email at SterlingTV19. There's no Jacob your here, copy. so the possession arrow is It's all is me frozen. today, and baby. We have a microphone here with it going your way. So it's all you. Three ball, no good. McDonald with an aggressive rebound. Then Dixon gets it stripped away from her. Eustace stays with it, and the layup is good. And what you're seeing from Eustace is them really using that bounce pass effectively down in the low post and tight spaces. You've seen that in their last two conversions offensively. So a one-point game, about 30 seconds left. Here's Dixon. Here's Quinn now, and here's Sims. Sims chucks up a three, shot does not go. And a nice rebound there by Higgins. So here's Serrano, 20 seconds remain, and we have another injured Bishop Eustace player. And that's Lauren Larada. Not sure what happened there. We were kind of looking away from the play. But then she's up on her feet. Yeah, she got up quickly on that one, again under her own power, so that's good to see. Let's see. Hmm. Kind of hard to tell yeah. what happened. But again, with the last two players that went down, good to see them up on their feet, walking off on their own. My guess, since it was off the ball, my guess she probably just got tripped up. Yeah. 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Eustace down by one, trying to get a final shot off. One second left. They have to chuck up a three. Shot is no good. That will end this first quarter of play. Sterling with a 10-9 lead after this first quarter. And it will be second quarter action coming up right after this. Man, I really like talking to you. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. What? Hit me. Why? Because. Are you going to hit me or not? <laughs> no. Uh, wrong answer. Ugh, this is so stupid. <clears throat> That's more like it. Ugh. I never said you could hit me. What is that guy fighting? What's your name? You never call me. Tyler. Are oh, you from Fight Club? Shh. You're the first one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sterling Channel 19. A little fly over there of Sterling High School. Second quarter action here at the castle. Sterling up 10 to 9 over this Bishop Eustace team. A little bit different of a look than we saw the other day with Camden Catholic pressing the whole night. And uh, that game had the feel of a track meet to it. This is more of a half court set game. Both teams patiently running their plays. Yeah, stuff we're more used to seeing. Yep. Three there is no good. Rebound by Quinn. 
So Chanel take it up the floor, then gets it to Dixon and finds Sims. Sims chucks up a three. Shot is good. Nothing but net. And for Sims be, there. Being an important part of their potential playoff run. Sims with her ability to hit from three. So here is Larada. But the stab. He's just trying to answer down by four. Trying to be patient here. Trying to get a good shot off. Trying to look for someone inside. Great ball movement. And that layup is good for Giovanni Rogers. Yeah, it, it's really impressive the way Serrano and I believe that was Staub there are working down in the low post. I mean, you talk about quick ball movement and just finding each other. We're going to watch this. This is really. A nice offensive pass here. You saw Serrano, you know, that's all part of being aware of everything that's going on around you. And you saw that right there in getting her that little bounce pass and finishing. Quick find to McDonald, then to Dixon. Here's Quinn, drives toward the basket, puts up a shot, no good. McDonald with the offensive rebound, then it's Quinn. That shot no good and an eventual foul. And it'll be Ireland K to shoot from the line. Ireland K been getting a lot of quality minutes lately. Comes in and one of those kids that has an impact one way or another. And uh, you see her right there doing a good job rebounding and getting herself to the free throw line. First shot no good. She puts that second one through, so a three-point lead here for the Lady Knights. 6.25 remaining in the first half. Aggressive defense here by Sterling. But again, Bishop Eustis, for the most part, has been very good with their ball movement. And a lot of their patient looks have been very effective. So we'll see if that trend continues. A nice find inside. That shot does not go. Gets tripped up, but Bishop Eustace is still with it, and then a foul. Yeah, and I think the key to Sterling, if you come over at Serrano with the help defense on that offside, somebody's got to rotate down and get that girl on that offside breaking towards the basket. Sterling hasn't done it the last couple times. and But that's something, you know, a team like Sterling that's very good defensively will definitely adjust to that. And you see it right there. You saw them come over, and you also saw Bridget Dixon shifting down to cut off. Rogers going to the basket. So good job, Sterling, of adjusting defensively within the game. And you've got Ireland K right there out on the perimeter. Not only a good rebounder, but she can really defend with her quickness. So that shot no good. Nice rebound by Quinn. So now here's Dixon with it. Finds Sims. Long pass to K, then out to Dixon. Finds K, then out to Sims, back to K. Floats it to Dixon, then to McDonald. McDonald chucks up a three, shot is no good. Quinn gets the rebound. Then finds Sims. Here's K, gets it to Dixon. Now it's Sterling taking their turn at some patience here on offense. Yeah, you know, when you go against evenly matched teams that play a similar way that you play, you're going to get probably more of the longer offensive sets from both teams that we've seen all year. So that foul is on Isabella Serrano. And I think the one, you know, we talked about it, the one good thing about Sterling, when they get into these patient offensive sets, they don't get frustrated. You know, we saw them win a 23-15 game. They play solid defense, and they'll just keep working you, working you, working you until they find the opportunity. 
You can follow us at SterlingTV19 on our Twitter page whenever you're looking for some behind the scenes information, whenever we go live and much, much more. You can follow us on Twitter at SterlingTV19. And again, no Jake here, so I get all the promos. You do. The possession hour is going right towards you. Take a look at that last foul there on Serrano. Plus, the possession hour guy's not here today either. He had to move over and take on a different role. So. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But hey, hey, we're working with what we got. You see but this? It, this, this, is our, this is our this is our this is our possession hour for today. So we don't have to move it. It's 100% Brian. It's going to stay there for the entire broadcast, and I love it. Back to basketball. Here's Dixon. She finds Sims. Back to Dixon. And Dixon will just chuck up a three. That shot is no good. And it will remain Sterling ball. And Brian, you know, we talked how these two teams are very similar. Everything I said about Sterling being patient in the half-court set, you could say the same thing for Bishop Eustace. Dixon chucks up another three. That time it goes. A nice three in the corner for Bridget Dixon and expands the Sterling lead to six. Yeah, we're seeing Bridget Dixon more on that baseline. And she's really moving her around to different spots in this game. That one kicked away by Sims. Take a look at the last basket here by Dixon. Beautiful three from the corner there. That one swatted out of bounds. And if I'm looking at both teams, one area I would say Sterling's got the advantage is defensively, they're more solid away from the ball. You're seeing Sterling able to free some people up and get loose. You, you're seeing at times Eustace chasing on the defensive end. Three is no good. It hit that top bar, so it'll be Sterling West to inbound it. That, well, you were here last night, probably th about three times, three or four times last night, the ball hit the bar in front. And that three is good by Morgan Sims once again. Morgan Sims didn't hit the bar there. No, she... That was she, nothing but net. All she hit was net right there. So that's a nine-point Sterling lead. That's their largest lead of the day. He's just trying to answer. Three minutes remaining in this first half. And we'll take a look at the last basket. I mean, again, as you said, that's what Sterling's going to have to really rely on when they get to these playoffs, Morgan Sims and her three-point shooting. And, and really, you know, obviously it's important to have that, you know, from a scoring standpoint, but it also brings the defenders out and opens things up for everybody else. A nice strip away there by Dixon is now it's Kay who has it for Sterling, then gets it to Dixon. And now it'll be Sterling controlling the pace. And trying to find McDonald inside, cannot. And it goes out of play. So now here's Rogers. Chucks up a three, shot is no good and goes out of play. I mean, Brian, you know, looking at this stretch run, Strong played a lot of very good teams, and, and obviously came to Catholic the other day was just an outstanding team, and I think that's great playing that caliber competition, no doubt about it, but I also like that the game before you're getting to the playoffs, you're playing a good team, but a team that's more on your level. And a big three there for Elena Stab, so it's now a six-point Sterling lead. And that's what can get used is back in this game. There's no question about it. Hitting from way out. Here's McDonald gets it to Kay. Then out to Dixon. Nice find to Sims. And 
nice to Dixon. Shot is no good. McDonald with the rebound, and McDonald with a good layup. Well, we mentioned rebounding is going to be an important part of what Sterling is going to be able to do today. And you've seen it from Paris Logan and there a putback from Mackenzie McDonald off of the rebound. Three is no good. And that pass intercepted there by Kay and then to Quinn. So here's Dixon with it now. 50 seconds remaining in this second quarter. Dixon finds McDonald underneath. The shot is good. There's McDonald really strong in turning, going against pressure, putting it right up soft off the glass. Three ball there, no good. And Sims, you got the rebound. And we'll see. And if you look at this, this play, I like the fact that Bridget Dixon always leaves the option open that she could kick it back out to Kay. Kind of freezes the defense just a little bit and gets that perfect bounce pass down McKenzie, to Mackenzie McDonald. Nice pass there to Dixon. She makes a move, drives toward the basket, and a foul called. So that'll send her to the line. Nothing new that Bridget Dixon's making her drives to the basket count one way or another and gets herself to the free throw line. First shot is good from Dixon. Her second, no good. So we'll see what Bishop Eustis can do with these last 10 seconds. Nice find there. Three ball, no good, and that will do it. That'll end this first half. Sterling with an 11 point lead over these Bishop Eustis Crusaders, 25 to 14. Second half action coming up right after these messages. Have a great day, guys. Have a great day. Thanks for being so kind. Have a great day, guys. He's so nice! Oh my gosh, it's so annoying. You're trash! I'm gonna have to take matters into my own hands!
Moral of the story, always be nice. <laughs> Redman's Revenge! Susie Banks? Sean McLear? What are you guys even talking about? Those are both myths. Get out of Young man, they try to tell you. We try to tell you. Yeah, Yo, you guys want us to just skip class and mess around? Wait, you haven't heard of the rumors? About the hallway predator? Those things are just made up. Teachers just want to scare us to go back to class. All right, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't linger in the hallways. <laughs> Where's your ID? You're late. Put your hood down. Where's your ID? And you have your backpack on.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sterling Channel 19. Sterling with a 25 to 14 lead over Bishop Eustis. As we are going to take a look at some of these leading scores for both sides. For Sterling, it's Mackenzie McDonald who leads the way for the Leading Knights with 10. Then it's Dixon with 9 and Sims with 6. And then for Bishop Eustis, it's Staub with 6, Rogers with 4, and Lorada with 2. We'll take a look at some highlights from, from Elena Staub who's had a very good day for Bishop Eustis so far. Well, hitting a three from way out, and if Eustis is going to get back in this game, the stop's going to be a big part of it hitting threes in this second half, but they're definitely going to need that. There's no question about it. We'll take a look at some highlights from Mackenzie McDonald, the leading scorer today for the Lady Knights. She's done a great job inside the paint today. Yeah, and it's all about how two things are happening. You're seeing on this one, Mackenzie just gets it and goes right to the basket. Has a good sense of knowing that there's an opening on that left side. And it's great to see the way Richard Dixon and Mackenzie McDonald are working together. They've got the timing down. And you can tell these two girls have played together for three years now. Yeah, you can tell they've had a really strong connection on the court this year, and they're just doing a great job working together. And that's pretty much how you can sum up this entire team. They're all, they're one big happy unit and happy family on this court because, again, they've worked together from day one, and now they're they're at their final regular season game before Tuesday. And it carries over, you know, we talked at length about defensively. They had a few backdoor layups, but they patched that up. Other than that, you know, the other difference between, obviously, Eustace hasn't hit the threes, but Sterling's getting girls running their offense, running their motion offense, are getting girls open with good looks, whereas Eustace isn't getting as many open looks, and that's a big reason right now why you're looking at an 11-point deficit for Eustace. So second half action about to get underway. Glad you're with us here again. I'm Brian McLernan, joined by Kevin Schulz. It'll be Bishop Eustis to start here in this third quarter. So we'll see how they get things going on offense in this second half. Nice find. Layup is no good. Eustis able to stay with it. But then it's Kay who takes it away for Sterling. Yeah, right there you saw they had good coverage on that baseline low post move away from the ball. Yeah, you saw two defenders collapse on the ball. Great coverage away from the ball. So Sterling is just picking up where they left off in the latter part of that first half. Layup no good by McDonald. Rebound there. Now it's Eustis with it. Nice drive toward the basket. That shot is good by Giovanna Rogers. A little bit of contact, but no call. I like that. They're letting them play. You know, we've seen it both ways. And I know yesterday with the girls game, the referees let them play, manage the game well. Take a look at the last basket here. A nice job by Rogers to drive toward the basket. Yes, you did what you had to do. You're going towards somebody who's trying to set the feet. She went laterally in that last split second that kind of freed her up for the layup. That was a real nice offensive drive to the basket. Nice find inside. Here's a three that's no good. We'll see who gets it. Then it's Quinn, who's the one who comes up with it. Loses it for a moment, but she gets it back. Then finds a wide open Dixon. No look pass to Sims. Long, long pass to Quinn. Now here's Kay who chucks up a three. Shot no good. Rebound by McDonald. That shot can't go. And then there's going to be a traveling violation. Let's take a look at it right here. Just a lot happening right there. The traveling violation goes on Sims. Here's Eustis. Here's a three. Shot does not go. Goes right into the hands of Sims. And Bishop Eustis right now, obviously, you said they have to hit some threes, and that's what they're trying to do, set things up for threes from the outside because they've really been frustrated for the most part, except for a couple opportunities, they've been frustrated down in the low post. And obviously, to wipe out this deficit, you've got to have some threes along the way. Nice find there, a foul at the end of that play. Bishop Eustis, they've had a lot of scoring opportunities already in this third quarter, and... 
so far they haven't really been able to capitalize on most of them. And you're seeing right there, that's one of those ones where you don't want to give up an easy opportunity. You've got a foul to give, not a bad foul right there. Here's a three, does not go. K gets the rebound. Well, they got an open look from three, but it's not hitting them right now. Dixon finds Sims. Back to Dixon. Trying to set up a play, gets it to McDonald. And, and Bridget Dixon bringing it way out, trying to pull the defenders out, just playing the way they need to play right now with this nine-point lead. Finds Dixon. There's a foul off the ball. A lot of physical play between Mackenzie McDonald and Serrano. You see it right there, away from the ball, trying to get in front of Mackenzie McDonald because that's been a big part of their offense, the motion offense. Getting the ball to Mackenzie McDonald, going to the basket. Serrano's trying to beat her there. So here's Quinn. Gets it to Dixon. Less than five minutes remaining in this third quarter. Sterling up by nine. And pass a bit too high for McDonald. It goes out of play. I believe McDonald was looking for a foul. She thought they definitely she had her arm there. Getting a little frustrated, but just didn't get the call that time. But sometimes if you do it, you kind of let the refs know maybe the next time you'll get the call. So Eustace still down by nine. We've only seen one bucket so far in this third quarter. Nice find underneath. Shot does not go. McDonald trying to get the rebound and then a foul at the end of the play. It'll send Lerata to the line. Man, that, that's a real nice job of Lerada right there. You know, sometimes, girl, especially for a younger girl, will just go straight up. She moved her body towards the defender, Mackenzie McDonald, and initiated contact and used that, obviously, to get herself to the free throw line. That's a, just a real good, heady play down low and, and knowing what's going on around you. Shot is good. By Lerato. So we now got a seven point game. Sterling looking for their first bucket of this third quarter. Close to about halfway through, and a big defensive play there. Can Eustace capitalize? First shot is no good. That shot's no good. Duffy can't come up with the rebound. But what a defensive play by Bridget Dixon going against Serrata, who's been outstanding going to the basket a couple times, finishing in the low post. So we'll see a timeout right here. Big one. You can follow Sterling TV 19 on our Facebook page. Behind the scenes information whenever we upload on YouTube, whenever we go live, and much, much more. Again, you can find all that when you find Sterling TV19 on our Facebook page. Not a lot of scoring in this second half, but I, we go back to Sterling is, is fine with that. They play their real good defense, run their offense, and some teams, I think, would get frustrated in this situation. But they're not going to do that. They're not going to force shots. They're not going to get into a rut. They'll just continue to try to get in that rhythm, and they're playing the right way as we look at our Next game, speaking of playoffs, Brian, yeah. take this one away. Yeah, our next TV game is Tuesday, February 21st. It's the first round of these playoffs. Sterling will take on Collingswood at 5 p.m. Coverage will be on Channel 19 as well as YouTube.com slash SterlingTV19. So a very exciting matchup and a little double header action we have on Tuesday. And just to add to that, you're having a, a low scoring game. And this one's a little bit more than what could they could be facing ahead. You've got Haddon Township who you could play in that second round, I believe. But they're, they're ahead. They play, you know, a uh, slow-paced game where they're going to hold the ball and, and force you to make mistakes and get frustrated. But Sterling played them the last time. They won, and 
They didn't get frustrated. It was a 23 to, 23 to 15 game. Nice pass there. Great ball movement by Eustace. Layup is good by Serrano. And just like that, we have a five-point game. Well, the first thing Eustace tried to do to get points on the board, get things going, was hitting threes from the outside. Now they're trying to shake it up with the press. Nice connection to Duffy as that shot is good. She gets her first points of the and, game. And, Brian, this is where I think playing Cam to Catholic the other day is going to help Sterling because nobody had a better press than them. Sterling got a lot of practice with it, struggled a little bit, but I think ultimately that experience is going to make this team better. Shot is tipped and swatted out of play by Quinn. Take a look at the basket here by Duffy. Good job by Duffy finishing off right there. Three minutes remaining in this third quarter. Wide open fine there, but elects not to shoot. Mid-range shot is good. Nice floater there. Yeah, just gave Rodgers a little bit too much space, maybe collapsed a little bit too much right there, giving her that opportunity. You don't want to make it that easy for Eustis. Sterling trying to control the pace. They lead it here by five. And remember, going into this half, their lead was 11. This is where we talk about being patient. Granted, they're chipping in the lead. No need to panic right now. You still have the five-point lead. Three for Quinn there. No good. Rebound by Rogers. Finds Serrano. Drives toward the basket. Three ball. No good. And it's Duffy who ends up with the rebound. So now here's Good job Dixon. by Sterling getting three girls in position under the basket for that rebound. Three for Sims. No good. And the foul at the end of the play as she takes a hard fall. She gets swatted to the floor. <laughs> I believe by Serrano. And that was one where Serrano knew if she didn't get the ball, her momentum was going to take her into Sims. Morgan Sims, a real good free throw shooter. Channel 19 kiss of death right there. She's missed both so far. We'll She'll now shoot her third. Of course, since it was a three, you're getting three opportunities. And none of them go. So and unfortunate there for Sterling. that my fault, Brian. It's all I good, Shules. It's fine. I'll take the, take the blame. Yeah, that could be a gift. That was an opportunity that Sterling had, but not able to convert. So we'll see how things go. Just gets it stripped away. Here's Dixon with it for Sterling. Big turnover here in this third quarter. Sims chucks up a three. Shot is no good. Kay gets the offensive rebound. Dixon will try and slow the pace at least a little bit. Sims not convert, but she's a shooter, so you just want her to shoot, keep shooting. Stuff like this happens in the course of the game. A big push right there by Haley Noonan. Boy, the last couple of minutes, the game's really gotten physical away from the ball. And, and the refs have been letting play, but obviously their calls you have to make. Nice find to Dixon. Drives toward basket. Nice little move there. The shot doesn't go. Moves out of play. It'll be Sterling Ball. Sims gets it to Kay, then to Dixon. 50 seconds remaining in this third quarter, Sterling up by five. Play for the last shot here. 
Sims chucks up a three. Shot is no good. Rebound there for Bishop Eustace. Long find to Rogers. Drives toward the basket. Layup is no good. Sims gets the rebound, but Rogers tried to strip it away. It's a jump ball. And the possession arrow is going to get the ball going Sterling's way. be a huge conversion for a Sterling team right now, struggling to get things going offensively. 15 seconds left. I believe Sterling just trying to play for a final shot. Never mind. Dixon drives. Swat out of play. Yeah, that, we've seen that a lot this year. They run the offense. Bridget Dixon sees that seam. Just wasn't able to convert. Three seconds left, foul. Clock stops with 3.2 left. Well, that's a great job of Aaron Quinn. You know, our guards on the outside really have a good sense of knowing what's in front of them. And when they see a defender coming at them out of control, that's a free opportunity to take that quick first step, drive to the basket, and she gets herself to the free throw line. That first shot was good by Quinn. And the second one's good as well. 3.2 seconds left. Just chucks up a shot. Close, but no good. Sterling with just four points in the third quarter, but they lead it by seven, 29-22 over these Bishop Eustis Crusaders. Four, fourth quarter action coming up right after this. Back to Sterling Channel 19, Sterling with a 29-22 lead over Bishop Eustis as we're about to get things started in this fourth quarter. And Sterling with only four points in the third quarter, but playing some aggressive defense, just yeah, try not to lose that lead. A tough quarter, but that's a great way to end it. We said they needed some type of conversion. A great job by Aaron Quinn getting to the basket, drawing the foul, getting herself to the free throw line, and more importantly, converting to extend this to a seven-point lead. So traveling violation there. It'll be Sterling Ball. Yeah, and, and off of that, and then you get the unforced turnover now. This is where Sterling's got to build on that momentum that they got towards the end of the third quarter and having a good, patient half-court set right here. So here's Dixon. And Decay, nice find to Quinn now. Drives inside, layup is good for Aaron Quinn. For another big basket by Aaron Quinn. I mean, she can hurt you in a lot of different ways. Plays great defense, and right now, in the last couple minutes, he's really done the job here. Rogers chucks up a three, shot is good. Big three there for Giovanna Rogers. Cuts the Sterling lead down to six. Well, that's the one thing we talked about that can get this useless team back in the game is hitting the threes and they were trying to set that up to start the second half weren't too successful but they definitely have the ability to drain them from the outside here's K out to Quinn Quinn drives layup is good Nice few buckets there for Aaron yeah. Quinn. Two of these three offensive opportunities that Quinn has had, and she's had all three, the last three, have been by getting a defender off their feet. And 
Rogers responds with another big three there. Boy, just, just a great tune-up game here for the playoffs. I love the way this game is really coming about here in this fourth quarter. Here's McDonald. Finds K, then out to Quinn. Out to K. To Dixon, back to Sims. Dixon's looking around the outside, and, and guys, I wouldn't be surprised to go back to Quinn right there. You see her fake drive, and the defenders are playing a little bit more off of her, so she's going to get some open looks out on the perimeter. And I think Coach Rockaballo sensed that, was telling the girls to get out on Quinn. I swatted away. Here's Serrano, drives toward the basket, almost gets it taken away. Shot is no good. McDonald gets that rebound. So now here's Dixon, gets it to Kay. Back to Dixon. There again, they're going back to playing off of Quinn. That that outside shot there, but I think Sterling right now is, is good to just work it and take some time off the clock. The foul called there. That's on Isabella Serrano. So they'll take Serrano out. And bring in Higley Noonan. Okay, back to Dixon. A little over four and a half minutes remaining in this game. Sterling up by five, trying to control the pace. Taking her time right now, really trying to force that defense to come out to them. No need to hurry right here. And you bring that defense out, that's going to open things up. Down low, you see them go to the outside right there. Not yeah, they're really spreading it out and not afraid to. If they go down low somehow and don't have the opportunity, they'll kick it back out. As you see it right here, getting it out front. And Eustace is kind of just playing back at some point. They're going to have to attack a little bit more. So that possession so is chewing a opportunity there, but Eustace did a good job. Covering that. It's just down by five. They need a bucket and they get it. Layup is good by Aislinn Higgins and a timeout called. It's a three point game. Boy, what a play by Higgins. You see right here going in on a give and go and bumping off two defenders and finishing. That's an outstanding play. Staying under control in that situation. Take one more look at it. And not only the play in and of itself, but, you know, the timing of it late in this game, getting it down to a one-score game. Yeah, and earlier you said that underneath pass is what Eustace has been doing really well. And right there, you could, you could tell they've been doing a great job just finding their girls underneath. As you take a look at this first round, Sterling will be taking on Collins with this Tuesday, February 21st at 5 p.m. And then you see... For the boys, they'll be taking on Camden Academy Charter. That game will be at 7 o'clock on Tuesday, so we'll have a little doubleheader action this Tuesday, February 21st. It's a big day for both these teams. Here we see Aaron Quinn, who's really been a big part of what happened towards the end of that third quarter and the early part of the fourth quarter. Getting Sterling going a little bit offensively. And we see Bridget. Dixon running the offense like she always does, doing a great job. And 
is a team right now that wants to finish this game off and go into the postseason really playing with a lot of confidence. Three minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. Yeah, Stone's going to continue to spread it out and try to get used to chasing. And if these opportunities there, they're going to take it. If not, they'll kick it back out, as you see him do it right there. That's a good play by Bridget Dixon, kind of pushing the defense back a little bit. Dixon driving. Floater cannot go. Goes into the hands of Stab. Yeah, and that's a play we've seen Bridget Dixon convert on a lot this year. Just hasn't been able to do it in the last two opportunities late in this fourth quarter. You see for the chance to tie it up. Rogers looking for that chance. Shot is no good. Is only down by three. No need to press. Just staying back in the half court. No defense. Stern's got to watch to get it. Big takeaway there for Eustace. And the layup is good. One point game and a timeout call. Yeah, and, and that's one thing you've got to watch late in the game. You get the ball out in the wing, you got to get rid of it in a hurry. And Eustace went with the trap right there, and that's just a real good job. Reading the play and going the other way for the conversion. By Noonan, another sophomore. So, Eustace has really edged their way and pushed their way back into this game now, only down by one. And you can follow us at Sterling TV19 on our YouTube. You can find all of our live coverages of all our sporting events, all our commercials, Castle Connections with Mr. Claiborne, and much, much more. Again, you can find all that when you follow Sterling TV 19 on our YouTube channel. And Bishop Eustace, they have not led since the first quarter, so they're they're looking for that lead now. And what, what an outstanding, well-played game. You know, we didn't get a lot of Helder Skelter running around. Uh, you know, a lot of unforced turnovers, a lot of great half-court sets, great defense. This pace really getting a lot quicker now as Eustace just has some of that momentum, but still in with that one-point lead. Dixon driving, shot no good. Yeah, they were really pushing for the five seconds, but it looked like Bridget Dixon just got under and committed and gets herself an opportunity to go to the free throw line. This is where you need a good point guard. Sterling certainly has one in Bridget Dixon. Dixon's first shot is good. And I like the fact that, you know, we, we said how she's really done a good job with this play all year. Last two times she didn't convert. Had the confidence to go at it again and get herself to the free throw line. Second shot falls. Big two shots there for Bridget Dixon. Three point game, a minute and a half remaining. What a thriller we've had at the castle this final regular season matchup for the Lady Knights. This gets it stripped away. Drive toward the basket, no good. McDonald with the rebound. Finds That's a big Sims. rebound by Mackenzie McDonald right there. Nice move by Dixon. Passes swatted away. What a, what a great job defensively by Stern. We talked about rebounding being a big thing. Mackenzie McDonald got the rebound. Also, Ireland came in a nice defensive play. Tied the ball up early on in that drive and kind of got the girl out of rhythm and forced her in an off-balance shot. Just really a great job defensively. You can follow Sterling TV19 on our Instagram. A lot of behind-the-scenes photos of all of our tech crew events, all our sporting events, and much more. Again, you can find all that 
plenty more when you follow Sterling TV19 on our Instagram. Coach Kate McDonald talking to her girls. Everybody looks really composed listening to the coach. Just, uh, I think this is a team that knows what they have to do. And if I was ever going to say there's a team going to playoffs that isn't the type of team that's going to beat themselves. I would say this team is just as solid defensively. They communicate real well. There's good good chemistry, a lot of good timing, allowing plays to develop when they're running their half-court sets. The team that you've really got to feel good about going into the playoffs, regardless of what happens in this game in the last minute. Nice find to McDonald. Then to Sims. 45 seconds left. Sim trying to make a move. Yeah, that's a great McDonald. job of Dixon forcing the other defender to come at her, then giving the ball up. Doing exactly what she had to do from the point guard position. Dixon double team and a foul. That's going to be on Rogers. Yeah, and I think Bishop Use is right there. Just wanted to try to pressure the ball, trap when they could, and seeing if they could come up with a steal. But you get to a certain point where. You want to foul and force Sterling to win it from the free throw line. Dixon from the line. First shot is good. Boy, Bridget Dixon's just been outstanding, Brian, in this last, been outstanding all day, but especially in this last minute plus of this game. Second shot is good. So we got a two possession game, 24 seconds left. Eustace needs a basket here and now. now yeah, they got to shoot right now. Yeah, they can't be they're taking too much time. You got to get a shot up. Shot no good. They get it back. Ball's on the ground. The possession arrow's going to open. Okay. Go. So we'll get a timeout with 5.3 yeah, seconds. Girls thought they had a jump ball before. Coach Rock Baller called the timeout, and they're going to argue that, but to no avail. Again, our next TV game this Tuesday, February 21st. Girls, girl, 21st. Girls basketball will take on Collingswood at 5 p.m. Coverage will be on Channel 19, as well as YouTube.com/SterlingTV19. First round of these playoffs. Well, the double header here on Channel 19 is at 7 o'clock. The boys will be taking on. I believe it's Camden. Camden Charter. Blues are Camden Charter. Yeah, the girls are going against Conjure. But boy, what an exciting atmosphere that's going to be. It's always great when the super fans come out. It's loud. And what an impact they have here. And what a home court advantage they give us for both the boys and the girls. Boy, what an outstanding, if this holds up, win for this Lady Knights team. Just a great way to end the season against a quality Bishop Eustis team. Chucks up a three. No good. The layup does go. But that is going to do it. Sterling wins their final regular season game 37-34 against Bishop Eustis. We'll have a post-game show to follow as Sterling will move to 20-6 to end this regular season. Post-game show to follow. Sterling wins at 37-34. Bullying me. Here, try this out. What is it? 
This is tough. You can report people that move. Thank you, man. Dude, you trying to win some big money tonight? Yeah, they don't call me Johnny Wiggles for nothing. Man, you better not sell me. I had a bad couple of weeks, but I need this money. Let's go win. Have you ever been here before? Yeah, I have. Dude, this looks amazing. Yes, it does. Welcome to Nightlife Casino. I'm Ricky, your deal for tonight. We'll be starting shortly. Let's have a good night. The game is blackjack. I'm feeling a little frisky. Let's go 200. Already, it's the first game. Nah, no, I'm playing it safe. Run one is over. One. Sir, we tied. Sir, we've lost. The next round will start in 10 seconds. What are you, what are you doing? I'm doing what's right. I'm going all in. You're nuts. That's all your allowance. That's all your money. You're gonna go bankrupt. Told ya. Watch where you're going, pal. Oh, my. F Wait a minute. What? Guys, this has to stop. 8% of high schoolers have bought my school property. It isn't cool. This ain't no fight club. We have to change. Would you check your email? What's email? The, the thing that keeps making that, that sound! Now I know why you didn't do me for the fire escape! Open it now! 1700 emails! Maybe you should open your emails too. You think so? I go to the bathroom.
It's getting late. I should really go to bed. Oh, what are you worried about? Come on, it won't hurt if you stay up another hour. You know what? You're right. It couldn't hurt to stay up for another hour or so. What? It's already 1 a.m.? I didn't even realize it was so late. I'm telling her I'm going to bed. Hello everybody, welcome back to Sterling Channel 19. Sterling wins at 37-34 over Bishop Eustace. You see right there, that's what the stadium complex looks like. About a month until that field is fully finished and we'll have some spring sports action. Bridget and Dixon I'll send it over to... First going to talk the bridge. Uh, boy, that was tight towards the end. Talk about how good it feels to come away with the win and the season. Um, yeah, they're a tough team, and we lost to them earlier in the year, and we just had a loss to Camden Catholic the other day, so we wanted to end on a win, and it just feels good going into playoffs, like, ending on a win. Yeah, and it, specifically, the one thing we liked about what you did in that last minute and a half, really did a great job handling the ball. Prior to that, had a few drives that came up short, but talk about that drive that you had that got you to the free throw line. Well, I, I just know I have to keep driving, because if they're going to play up on me, it's, it's easier to go by, and yeah, I just have to stay ready. Let me ask you this. I know the, the press, they came up with this, with a real soft press, a lot of pressure. Do you think the pressure you faced the other day helped you in this situation? Yeah, definitely. Camden Catholic was really big and fast, so it got us ready for this game. Bridget, thanks for coming on with us. Great job. Thank you. And Aaron, uh, we felt like a big way that you stepped up was at the end of that third quarter. You guys really struggled for offense. Talk about what you were trying to do towards the end of the third quarter. You had the ball. I think you drove in. Yeah, I just saw my chances, so I just took it because I know we needed the points and we needed to get up by more, so I just just drove in and went in. So. You had, when we started the fourth quarter, you had a couple more drives at a basket. Was it a case of them playing you real close and you knew that you had that opportunity? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I knew they were like how they're um, defending me. I could go by them, and so I just took it to my advantage. Yeah, you definitely came up big. I'm going to ask you how the ankle is. I was I talked the other day. I wasn't sure you were going to play, but I saw you out here. How's it feeling? Um, it feels good. I went to I've been going to Sean a lot, and I have it wrapped, and I had a brace on, so it felt a lot better, and it didn't hurt today. So I just kept playing. Lots of ice and lots of rest. <laughs> Thank Thanks for coming on with us. Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> And we have Coach McDonald coming in here. Hi. Boy, Coach, uh, you know. Doing more gray hair? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> You're fabulous. You're fabulous. Um, your thoughts just on this game and ending the season with a win against a pretty tough team? I mean, yeah, they're they're a good team. We lost them earlier in the season, so it was a good you know a, a good way for us to end it. Twenty game, twenty win season. Is something to you know be, be really proud of. Yeah. I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah, that, towards the end of that game, I'm sure you're mentally, um, mentally worn out. Um, talk about your team, and I talked to you a little bit ago about how your team, if there's a slow, patient game, offensively, and you get into some ruts, 
your defense is what's going to carry you through. Is that a good indicator of your team going to the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, we we at times you see you see you know struggle to score, but we know that if we can play good defense, we're going to be in any game, and we just have to keep hanging around and find ways to win. And I think the maturity shows through, even though we did not have a you know great second half. They still play defense. They they stick together. They don't get mad at each other. They follow the game plan. You know, I think they trust each other and they trust me and I trust them. And it's just their the, the maturity has really grown over the past couple of years. The last thing I'll ask you: You talked about playing high caliber competition. That was a real good Camden Catholic team. And I mentioned to Bridget that it seemed to me like even though that was a tough game, the experience of facing that press. Then when you come at the end of this game, you're facing pressure. Talk about how that had a positive effect on your team. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're not going to see teams that are that that long and that that's fast as Camden Catholic. We won't see anything like that. So hopefully that's made us better and we can make some adjustments and learn from that. And it'll hopefully make other presses seem not quite so intimidating. Well, you guys did a great job, Coach. Best of luck. In the playoffs, we can't wait. It's going to be exciting here on Tuesday night. He's one and one and done. You know, good luck to the boys, and hopefully everybody makes a, a deep run into the playoffs. Yep. Lots of fun ahead of us. Thanks, Coach. Right, okay. Right. Yep. Okay. And back, Brian. You see there, girls, South Jersey Group 2 first round playoffs will be held this Tuesday at the Castle. It'll be the girls taking on Collingswood at 5 p.m. And then for the boys, it'll be them taking on Camden Academy Charter at 7 p.m. on Tuesday. It'll be a little Channel 19 doubleheader. We all love those. But uh, thank you all so much for joining us here in this final regular season matchup for the girls. I'm Brian McLernan, joined by Kevin Schulz. Thanks to Mr. K and all the tech crew guys for helping us.